Hello everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri from Team MDS Conquer. So now we'll go, I'm going to discuss about the development of the palate and muscles of the soft palate and the palate anomalies. So the, these are the contents of my video. Coming to the brief introduction, this actually this palate will have two components. One is hard which uh, that is bony part which is called as a hard palate and another is muscular which is called as a soft palate which is present posteriorly so you can see here hard palate and the soft palate so development of the soft palate begins forming the fifth week in the fifth week of intrauterine life and it, it it forms from the three processes mainly that is two palatal processes and the one frontonosal process and the primary palate formation it is formed by the merging of two median nasal process whereas the secondary palate formation between 6th and 8th week of the development secondary palate occurs and here the, the shells will grow inferiorly in the vertical direction and uh, along the sides of the tongue then tongue contracts in the 8th week then palatal shells will flip in superior direction then they elongate and move medially and fuse with each other to form the secondary palate. So that is regarding the formation of the soft palate, primary palate and the secondary palate. And this secondary palate will meet the posterior portion of the primary palate and fuses together forming the final palate at the 12th week of the intrauterine life. So you can see here this is the secondary palate and here this is the primary palate. And this muscles of soft palate will be developed from this. This tensor valley palatine first to develop from the first pharyngeal arch at the 40 days of conception. Whereas uh, levator valley palatine and palatopharyngeus derived from the fourth pharyngeal arch. Muscular uvula developed from the fourth pharyngeal. And palatoglossus develops from the fourth arch. So all these from the fourth arch whereas the first pharyngeal arch gives rise to the tensor valley palatine. And this soft palate is like a muscular fold which is movable, okay, which is suspended from the posterior part of the hard palate. And it also separates this nasopharynx from the oropharynx. You can see a hard palate and this is the soft palate. Then there are two surfaces of this uh, soft palate. There is anterior surface and posterior surface. And here the differences are mentioned. The convex, concave and convex stratified squamous where is respiratory epithelium contain palatine glands whereas attached to the tubal elevation and marked by median raphe and continuous superiorly with the floor of nasal cavity so you can mention this difference between the anterior surface and the posterior surface of the soft palate and borders there are of uh, superior border attached to the hard palate inferior is free and from the lower free border, a part called uvula is developed and laterally to curved folds of mucous membrane extend laterally and downwards. Anterior fold is called as a palatoglossal arch whereas posterior fold is called as a palatopharyngeal arch. See in here, this is a posterior fascial pillar this posterior fold and this is the anterior fascial pillar which is the anterior fold then structure the soft palate consists of muscle fibers aponeurosis lymphoid organs glands blood vessels and the nerves and this is very important if they ask about palate you have to write about this palate and aponeurosis and this is a fibrous sheath which is attached to the posterior part of the heart palate and it splits to enclose the musculus uvulae and it gives origin and insertion to all the palatine muscles you can see here this is the palatine aponeurosis coming to the muscles of the soft palate so this is the group of muscles of the soft palate which includes tensor villa palatine, levator villa palatine, musculus uvula, palatoglossus and the palatopharynges. You can see here levator villa palatine, this is the tensor villa palatine, this is the palatopharynges and this is the palatoglossus. And this is the musculus uvula. This you can draw like a line diagram. 
first coming to the tensor palatine it origins at the scaphoid pose of the pterygoid process and lateral side of the cartilage of the auditory tube and it insert into here it 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 become tendinous and around and curves around the hamulus of the medial pterygoid plate so this is the hamulus which it becomes the curves around this and then it spreads out into the soft palate as a palatine aponeurosis then coming to the levator villi palatine it forms the bulk of the soft palate origin is from the uh, inferior surface of the petrous temporal bone and lower part of the cartilaginous part of auditory tube whereas it inserts into the anterior surface of the palatine aponeurosis so this is the levator villi palatine then musculus uvula it is lies in the midline enclosed in the palatine aponeurosis origin from the posterior nasal spine and the insertion into the mucous membrane of the uvula so this is the musculus uvula shown here then coming to the palatopharynges it consists of anterior part and the posterior part posterior part belongs to superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx origin is from the palatine aponeurosis insertion posterior part into the pharyngeal raphe and anterior part into the posterior border of thyroid cartilage so you can see here this palato pharyngeus muscle here then coming to the palato glossus this palato glossus muscle is i mean it origins from the aponeurosis and under surface the posterior margin of the heart palate and it inserts into the palato glossal folds and into the sides of the tongue so this table represent the action of the muscles so musculus uvula shortens the uvula levator palatine elevates the palate and open up the pharyngeal end of auditory tube whereas tensor palatine will depress the palate and causes tension in it and the palato glossus closes the oropharyngeal isthmus and palato pharyngeus will elevate the wall of the pharynx so these are the this table is important you can uh, write as it is like you can depict that completely in your exam uh, which gives the entire actions of the soft muscles of soft palate then there is an other important structure it is called as a passavant's ridge you have to write this point and this is formed by because some some of the upper fibers of the palato pharyngeal pass circularly deep into the mucous membrane of the pharynx and form the sphincter internal to the superior constrictor so this fibers constitute the passavant's muscle which on contraction rises ridge called as passavant's ridge on the posterior wall of the pharynx so this is present near the posterior wall of the pharynx so you have to write the entire regarding this passavant's ridge and what is the significance of this ridge when the soft palate comes in contact with this ridge it closes the pharyngeal isthmus hence during swallowing speech vomiting gagging this ridge helps to cut nasopharynx from the oropharynx this is very very important so you have to compulsory you have to mention every regarding this passavant's ridge then coming to the blood supply greater palatine branch of maxillary artery ascending ascending palatine branch of facial artery palatine branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and tonsillar branch of dorsalis lingue are the blood supply arterial supply if you venous drainage is because of pterygoid and the pharyngeal plexus of veins and lymphatics into upper deep cervical and the retropharyngeal lymph nodes the now supply with with greater palatine now nasopalatine lesser palatine middle palatine and tonsillar branch nerves so motor is by all muscles is supplied by pharyngeal plexus whereas tensor villi palatine is by mandibular nerve because we have read that we, you have you people have seen that tensor villi palatine from the first arch right so it is supplied by the mandibular nerve then the secretor motor they come from the facial nerve and the taste fibers are derived from the facial nerve then this movements and functions the soft palate controls two stages that is upper airway or pharyngeal isthmus and upper footway or oropharyngeal isthmus so during the speech this oropharyngeal isthmus is closed or open so that modulation are correctly pronounced 
during sneezing as air is directed through the nasal and oral cavities without damaging the narrow nose so these muscles help in that and even these muscles have a very important role in the swallowing that too in the second stage of swallowing then this completes the all anatomical uh, uh, structure of the palate development of the palate and the muscles of the soft palate then coming to the applied aspects you can mention these applied aspects again can be grouped into anatomical anomalies like cleft palate and these are the syndromes group of syndromes which are associated with the cleft palate so you can mention few syndromes in in from this slide then well velopharyngeal insufficiency due to the anatomic dysfunction of the palate then bifid uvula remember these all are the malformations or anomalies like inherited disorder this bifid uvula most commonly seen in the males then coming to the morphological variations of the soft palate you can see this on the radiographs they are of type 1 which is leaf shaped or lanceolate shaped type 2 it is a rat tail shaped type 3 it is a bulb like shape you can see here type 4 is a straight line type 5 is a distorted soft palate that presents the s type 6 is 6 is a crook shaped appearance and the most common type of soft palate is type 1 whereas the most common seen in obstructive sleep apnea is type 6 so these points you can mention so those are the uh, soft palate variations of soft palate on the lateral cephalogram studies then even you can mention about the paralysis of the soft palate these are because of the lesions in these regions which causes nasal regurgitation nasal twang of voice flattening of the palatal arch and deviation of the uvula see so you can see here the depressed palatal arch and the uvula is deviated towards the normal side then posterior palatal seal which is very important in the prosthodontics during the impression making functions it retains the maxillary denture and reduces accumulation of the food in the behind the denture coming to the oral submucous fibrosis even it involves the muscles of the palate and the it involves the palate region so you can mention this oral submucous fibrosis also as an applied aspect then obst obstructive sleep apnea this is because of elongated tissues of soft palate edema of the soft palate and tonsillar hypertrophy so even you can mention this is applied aspects then petechiae mostly will seen on the palate right so these are the various causes of the petechiae which occur on the palate so you can mention few of them few of these causes in the applied aspects then coming to the bacterial infections like streptococcal pharyngitis tertiary syphilis which forms gamma leprosy these are those are the bacterial infections which mainly involves the palate then coming to the viral infections herpangena which mostly seen in the children uh, which is caused by coxsackie virus type k you will see the viral ulcerations on the palate then fungal infections most of the deep fungal infections like histoplasmosis cryptococcosis blastomycosis mucormycosis all these involves the soft palate which causes the necrosis of the palate and uh, which causes the perforation palatal perforation and you will see the some important manifestations of hiv on the palate like these are the uh, conditions or uh, lesions where you can manifest in the hiv like erythematous candidiasis herpetic ulcers leukoplakia kaposi sarcoma aphthous ulcers petechiae and uh, cryptococcosis actinomycosis and papilloma virus infections all these are the list of uh, lesions which occurs in the palate in the hiv patient then most of the salivary gland tumors can minor salivary gland tumors will in, involve the palate so 
you can write about that salivary gland tumors and also salivary necrotizing salometaplasia which is a non inflammatory and a non neo sorry it is a inflammatory and a non neoplastic condition where you can see unilaterally mostly on the junction of hard and soft palate because of this trauma then you can write pleomorphic adenoma most in 68.1% cases you can see mucoepidermoid carcinoma you can see involving the palate and there are other miscellaneous lesions or disorders like uh, Epstein pearls, which are the developmental cyst, which can see near, linearly along the mid palatine raphe. Then bones dodules, which you can see the soft palate and also junction of the hard and soft palate, and also in the allular ridge. And in stomatitis nicotina, which is because you can see the inflammation of the minor salivary glands, which is seen on the palate, which is tobacco related. Then lymphoid aggregates, which are, which are like the elevated nodules and have a slight yellow-orange hue, which can be seen on the soft palate. And aptostomatitis, which occurs on freely mobile mucosa. And in traumatic ulcers or traumatic burns or thermal burns, you can see on the palate. Uh, and this traumatic ulcers may be because of the irritation with the denture. And denture sore mouth that is stomatitis that is like type 1, type 2, type 3 denture stomatitis can also seen on the palate. So these are the uh, I mean like applied aspects which are given many applied aspects are uh, given in this video. So you can select few of them and you have to write the applied aspects when they give a development of the palate or uh, muscles of the soft palate you have to mention those anomalies development anomalies okay these are the references of the video